Yeah, thank you. Thank you, folks. Yeah, so good to see you guys here. Um, I really need to say that this talk is a kind of academic. So if you, if you like this, this thing, so we are going to see some background of the ideas of the garbage collections, some of the, the main ones that we, uh, we know, I think that we need to point out the main one. And then we're going to move to the, some tests that we made, some benchmarks. So this is the agenda for today, right? So my name is Felipe. Uh, I wor work for Erlang Solutions as a developer. But, but before I get to, to this position, I was in the PhD, so in computer science. What was great, I, loved it. I learned a lot of things, uh, including Erlang and more stuff. So and uh, the idea of this talk is to see uh, perhaps we may, it's a better idea to let just the garbage collection crash and uh, die and release our members. So let's, let's go ahead. So the, the point is, why garbage collection? We still need to talk about it. That's true or not? So the point is, uh, the garbage collection is to facilitate our lives as a developer. So could you imagine if you need to like allocate the memory and said, okay, I need this size of memory, this chunk of memory. That would be a nightmare, I would say, probably. Yeah, some of the folks are still uh, doing that, like in C, but uh, for, for me, it's uh, completely insane. So the garbage co uh, collection can do the job for us. That's great. So it also increases uh, how the world, how the, how the software that we are building we're going to work because we can keep the focus on the main concern of the problem. So we need to be focused on the to resolve that and uh, the don't think in this kind. Because otherwise we can like, uh, we should allocate and deallocate. That's a nightmare. Because eventually you can forget something or do some mistake and it crash your whole system down. So that's not idea. So let's the garbage connect collection does the job for us. It uh, is also an efficiency for our, our software. So the main garbage collections that well know for the, I don't know, for the whole history of the computer science is the Mark scan or Mark uh, sweep, you can name it like this. Reference counting, the copy, also the generational one and so on. But those, those three here are the main ones that are very well known and uh, they're still playing actually, okay? Uh, the first one that you're going to see is the Mark Sweep or Mark Scan that was uh, created by Mark uh, Mac McCarthy in 1916. So it was a long time ago to Lisp. Some of the folks would say that it would be the best uh, invention and contribution for the community, like for computer science uh, in Lisp was the, the garbage collection. So basically the idea is uh, it calls the allocation when they, when they need. So if you are uh, doing the, uh, implement some, some, some code, then you need to allocate that. So you just call the allocator and then it grab up chunk of memory from the free position. If you don't have that, so they gonna start the mark scan algorithm to you and searching for uh, a new one, new cell, new, new object, new position in the memory, so you can uh, use that. So, but actually when uh, we get at this point that we need uh, the garbage collection, uh, it's going to like start to mark the positions that you are using and the position that you are, that uh, they can die and can rise. So what's the point? The collection really uh, happens in two steps in this algorithm. The first one, as I said, is the mark one. So it, it marks the object that you have uh, in the memory that you're still using. So you can keep that, okay, those ones are what I still care about. The, the rest you can like clean up for me, so. But the collection only occur in the, the, in the sweep uh, part of the, the, the work. That one. So is, this is the moment uh, what the collections really take place and uh, it can clean up your memory. But the point is, all the time that you need to do that, you need to stop the whole system and uh, okay, let's take care only about the memory right now. So your software, they just stop at all, they stop and they, they need to collect the memory. And actually you get, oh, can, you mean that my software is stopped to work? Yes, At, for, a mil, uh, for a little short time, they, call, they need to stop the whole thing. 
because they need collect it and we cannot like lose something that we are that is important to us. Uh, another technique, as I said, is the reference counting. Let's cover the the main ones and then we can go ahead with the 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 results that we get. So the first accounting one is the most simple. We can say that because you basically keep a reference for each object that you have in the memory. Okay, that's a simple, right? Uh, for each moment that I need, I have someone pointing to that position. We increase the number of the counter, and if you you don't need that anymore, you can decrease that number. That's easy. Okay, but if you uh, look carefully, what you're gonna see is that we are uh, consuming more memory because we have the object itself in the heap and we also have this counter that is allocated to count this, this thing, right? So let's keep that in mind. Um, the basic idea is when you have, when you need the, the free position, then we can call the allocate and, and it gets uh, the position for you from the heap, from the free list. If it doesn't have an uh, object there, so we start to, to check uh, what's the next position. So the, the algorithm is very, very, very simple. So uh, the counting part is it's occurring during the, the execution of the program. What it means is uh, your system is running and you're still counting all the time. So you have a new reference for that position, so you can, you need to, the algorithm increase that, the counter for you. If you don't need that more, so it decreases for you. So you don't need like stop your system at all because when it go to zero, you know that, okay, this position here, you can put it back to the free list because we don't, you don't need that anymore that point so you can like uh, have this position back. This is a good idea, this is a good algorithm. It's very simple and we can see that, okay, I don't, I don't need to stop anymore. That's good, that's what we want, we want right? But uh, eventually we can face a, a, a very common problem that occur that we have like, for example, three uh, objects in the heap and each uh, one of them are pointing to each other. Then you lose the, the last position, let's say it like this, that connects to the, the main program. So they catch, they are trapped in a cycle. And you cannot see that because each of the references are equal to one. So you cannot, oh, that's a nightmare. So that, that pool in my heap, they you just keep that forever? That's the problem of reference counting. But uh, for, the, for God's sake, we have a solution already for this, this kind of thing. Uh, what they do is uh, they can sweep again uh, the memory and see if we have like uh, the, some position that are pointing one to other, one to another. So in this case, it can like release all three or, or whatever the, the, the sizes of this cycle. Okay, let's go ahead. The cop one is very common, and uh, I'm gonna say in the future that this one is what we have implemented in Erlang, so we care about this one. It's very, very, very simple. The first version was from 1973, what is uh, the most simple one. So basically, it uh, gives you uh, the whole heap, it divided in two slices. So the first part, you allocate your, your variables, your objects, everything there. And then if you, when you don't need, when you need a new space, and okay, I am gonna need it, uh, but my space is already uh, full, what are I gonna do? So it starts to sweep and check the points that you have in heap and put it uh, only what you need that's still alive to the second size of the heap. So in this way, he can like track easily what you need and what you can raise from the memory and uh, release that part, okay? That's a simple one, uh, also a simple one. Uh, it calls allocated when you need it, it divides the heap by two, as I said, uh, it can flip the, the positions, I mean, when they are flipping, he's going from one, one position of the heap, like one side, uh, to another one. We call it like front space to space, it's, it's a very common stuff. Uh, then it copy and from one side to another one when you need it. And in this way you can keep that like until your programs end. Uh, the collecting part is when you, you make this, this new, new copy for the second part of the heap. So it keeps switching it all the time, all the time, all the time. Okay, you're gonna see a little bit in further how Erlang does this, this part. 
Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about Golang. So Golang was created uh, at Google by Robert, uh, Rob Pike and Thompson in 2017. It's a very common and very useful uh, and powerful uh, language. Uh, they use, uh, they do not share memory, so they communicate by channels, send message. So it's something that we really, uh, is very kind of, it's a kind of similar what we do in the Bing. Uh, but they still uh, using some, but there's still some problems that you're gonna, that they are facing. It's interesting because, because Golang right now, it has like a quite a big number of users and uh, they are improving a lot the garbage collection for them. And uh, the main one, we're gonna see further, okay. Erlang was created by Joe, uh, Robert, and uh, Mike Williams, everybody knows that, okay. It's created, in, uh, was created at Ericsson uh, in 1986, that's a long time ago. And uh, what it used, okay, go ahead. Um, Golang used the Mark Sweep one, or Mark Scan, as, as I said with a difference because it also used the uh, tricolor algorithm on Fondixtra. What it does is when we need to mark uh, the positions at the mark phase, what it does, it trace the positions, uh, it mark with three colors, so I can identify easily and more fast and more effective the, what I'm going to suite, what I'm going to release, and what I'm going to keep. This is the way that Golang is using. Uh, it's, uh, they are improving and they are releasing the Golang each year with few more uh, improvements to the garbage collection. I think that they get a, a really good uh, goal with the, they can guarantee to you that if you are running your program and the garbage collection need to take place, it just costs for you a pause of a small less than 10 milliseconds. That's guaranteed for for them for for the garbage collection. It's a good thing because it facilitates facilitates a lot uh, when we talk about uh, real time systems and uh, concurrent systems because we need to keep track uh, the time pause. This is the main goal that we are, we are trying to achieve. Okay, uh, Nierlang, as I said before, use the COP same space garbage collection with the generational one. What that means is we are copying uh, the memory between the two slices of the, the space of the heap, but we have this implementation of the garbage collection work for per each process. What that means is when, we are, when your process is pound and you create a new, new process, it has its own memory. So for that memory, we have that, this approach. Another thing that it does, that Erlang does is uh, it's, they observe that if you, uh, the new objects that are allocated, they tend to be cleaned and released uh, sooner. So in this case, we, if you, one object keeps in the memory, they survive more than two or three cycles, then we can, okay, this probably, uh, you get, you're gonna be an old object that we probably do to the rest of the execution of the, the program. So what they do is uh, they keep uh, between a uh, difference between the young generation of the heap and the oldest. The oldest is where they keep the, the objects until the end of the program. So uh, some tips from each one of the garbage collections. The Erlang side, uh, each process, as I said, has his own memory. So it does run a garbage collection per process. Uh, the atom itself, it has his own memory too. It can be allocated with the, the atom can be allocated with the process. We're gonna see that in a few. Uh, ETS also uses tables and binary also, they have uh, his own place to take. Uh, in Golang side, uh, objects may live uh, in, in the heap on the stack. So they have this implementation uh, or during the compile time that can decide, okay, this object you probably leave in the stack because eventually, very soon, they will be raised. We not we needed that anymore. So we can like keep it in this in the, in the stack because we can like uh, put and put out easily. But eventually, when they don't know the lifetime of that object 
like when you escape from one scope of your program to another one, when you are passing it to, for example, for a function, or if you touch the constant of your program, so they cannot decide at compile time what is the lifetime for that object. So it put that object, in this case, in the heap because it's more safe than the garbage collection with the mark scan one and the sweep that we saw before, it can take care of that, okay? And ensuring that I have like a minimal pause of 10 milliseconds, that's interesting. Uh, Golang, as I said, it does a very powerful uh, code analysis com during the compile time. So it tried to put, as I said, the object when we need to allocate that to the stack, but it eventually, and uh, more often, it cannot say, okay, it's gonna keep that. So it put that back to the heap because the garbage collection can, can handle it. The object itself is reachable from the heap in some situations, as I said, as when you cannot decide uh, the lifetime of it. Also, uh, depends of the size of the object itself. We can like, we need to put that directly to the heap when the object passed from one scope to, to another, as I said, uh, so we cannot decide, like we cannot see what is the lifetime of the object. This is for our goal length. Uh, when there's not uh, a much information about it, mainly when we are doing the constants, so we face this kind of thing. So the idea of my, so in the Erlang side, so we have the atoms that can, uh, are never deleted, so what that means is, uh, all atoms that will be leaving our program, they will be keep until the end of the execution. So they have a, a already set a limit of the, the size of the heap for these ones. That's good. The Erlang VMs creates a fixed site for all atoms. Systems crashes if if it, it like if it cross this line. Okay. So all this information that I'm giving to you guys are related to both languages, as you can see. For example, the small binaries, uh, it can live together with the process, or if they are a kind of uh, a bigger or large, they can keep the uh, in this separated part. The test table are totally isolated, uh, where items are copied using the copying from, from one space to the space as using the cop algorithm. Uh, process, but what, one interesting thing that as when I were doing the research, we figured out was there in Erlang, the process, they usually, they, they finish the job and they can raise the whole heap for us. So it doesn't make uh, much, much sense for us to keep that uh, tracking all objects. So you can, oh my God, and eventually the process can die and this uh, supervisor can restart that. So what you do, we can like just let the process crash, then we can release our, our memory. Uh, in Golang side, uh, it's opposite because they usually they panic. So that's dangerous because uh, if you panic in Golang, you're probably, your system's going to shut down completely. So just to summarize, um, this talk is part of my research that I did in the PhD. Uh, what we created, we created a new uh, region based on memory uh, garbage collection. So what it does is basically uh, during compile time, we decide that uh, we can check uh, the lifetime of some objects. Then we keep track that once and we put all together because we can like raise all of them in the same, in a single uh, movement. Uh, when we are doing the research, we couldn't not, uh, impl uh, we decide to not implement this algorithm to Erlang because we see that the objects are dying uh, very soon or rising the uh, the memory in the heap too soon so we cannot we not we don't need to keep the track for each object so uh, we create this new one we can fork the project if you want to check it out uh, is implemented for golang we are still planning to uh, give some try with erlang to to be able to get more results um, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna b bother you with some results that I have here, but we can. We 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 can. I can show you guys later if you ask me around. Uh, we get really good results, like reducing the number, the rust pause time. So uh, to the mark scan, 
we we are doing it because we basically are reducing the number of the reduces of the the time that we are spending doing the real collection. So this is a part of the numbers. Uh, I think that my my time is almost done, so I get to drop this results here is very quickly. So, but I can show you if you ask me around. Uh, this is a kind of uh, profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just a uh, few. Uh, the conclusion that we have real fast is uh, we create a new algorithm for uh, reference counting using the region based memory uh, management. Uh, we don't need to, to, to care about anymore about the time, the, the pauses, uh, but there is no silver bullets, so it's better if you just let the garbage collection crash or let your process die because it can raise your memory for you and does the job. So thank you. So you have thank you, Felipe. <laughs> thank you, Felipe. Uh, I'll let everyone decide if they want to bounce out to lunch right now or if they have a few questions that they'd like to ask. If you have any questions, raise your hand. If you need to run to lunch because you're starving, go ahead. Over here. Any questions? Over there? here. Uh, yep. Uh, so Erlang is known for being immutable. What role does immutability play in garbage collection? Uh, what it does is uh, eventually for your process you need to run the garbage collection. Uh, what we check during the research part was that that doesn't need to take place that much because eventually the process is going to finish well or you're going to crash and raise, as I said, the whole memory. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, hi. First yeah. of all, uh, my day job is Golang, so thank you. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, good, good, good. But second, um, have you looked into Orca? Uh, that's a garbage collection and uh, a white.